Many of my patients have been erroneously told by other doctors that multiple sclerosis does not cause pain, but it can. Here are 11 ways MS causes pain. Number one, trigeminal neuralgia. This syndrome is a brief, sharp, often electric pain in the distribution of the trigeminal nerve on one side of the face, often in the eye, forehead, or cheek. It can be severe to the point where it causes weight loss because eating is painful. It's often triggered by talking to touching the face, shaving, or brushing the teeth. Anyone could get trigeminal neuralgia, but it's linked to MS with 10 to 15% of people with MS experiencing the syndrome. Sometimes it can be associated with MRI lesions in the lateral pons on the same side of the pain as shown here, though it can be treated with certain prescription medications like oxcarbazepine and carbamazepine. Number two, muscle spasms. Damage to the axons or nerve fibers descending from the upper motor neurons in the brain and spinal cord leads to unregulated firing of the lower motor neurons causing muscles to spasm and contract often causing painful cramps like the calf spasms my wife is faking here though she actually gets them in real life common treatments of muscle spasticity and spasm include good hydration stretching high potassium diet magnesium supplements like magnesium oxide 400 milligrams twice daily and certain prescription medications like baclofen and even medical marijuana. Number three, neuropathic pain. Often described as burning, sharp, electric, or sensitive pain, this is caused by a dysfunctional nervous system sensing pain even when no injury is present. For instance, let's say you have a lesion in the thoracic spine as shown here. Your legs are normal, but they're sending sensory input through a damaged spinal thalamic tract, and by the time that information gets to the brain, it's misinterpreted as pain. There can be certain features such as allodynia or a normally non-noxious stimulus like light touching causing pain. It can be treated with various treatments, alternative treatments like acupuncture or the nutritional supplement alpha lipoic acid and prescription medications such as gabapentin. Number four, multiple sclerosis hug. This is a tight banding sensation around the chest or the abdomen and it's associated with lesions of the thoracic spine and there are different variants. Sometimes it's only on one side. It can be mistaken for other conditions like a heart attack if it occurs in the chest or gallbladder disease. Though it can be treated successfully with neuropathic pain medications, it's thought to be possibly a muscle spasm, perhaps of the intercostal muscles, or a form of neuropathic pain. Number five, layer meets phenomenon. This is associated with lesions of the cervical spine as shown here, and with flexion of the neck like this, people get an electric sensation down the spine sometimes with radiation into the limbs. It's not always painful, but it can be. My experience is when it's associated with an acute lesion, it often resolves spontaneously and overall is much less likely to be chronic compared to multiple sclerosis hug. Number six, paroxysmal symptoms. This strange class of MS symptoms is sudden or paroxysmal symptoms that occur randomly. One example would be flexor spasms, a strange contraction of the biceps and and anterior forearm muscles causing severe pain, or random sensations in the body that are brief and severe, often associated with a nerve pain or muscle spasm component. One hypothesis of why this occurs is dysfunction at the obersteiner redlich node. This is the junction between the central nervous system, where oligodendrocytes are the myelinating cells, and the peripheral nervous system, where Schwann cells are the myelinating cells, it's thought that dysfunction in this area can lead to spontaneous discharges and strange symptoms. These paroxysmal symptoms often improve with the drug carbamazepine. And as a reminder, please talk to your own provider for personal medical advice. Number seven, glossopharyngeal neuralgia. This is analogous to trigeminal neuralgia, but much more rare, and the pain occurs in the distribution of the ninth cranial nerve, or the glossopharyngeal pharyngeal nerve. It causes pain in the tongue, throat, and sometimes in the ear, though it can respond to the same medications that work for trigeminal neuralgia. Number eight, optic neuritis. This common attack in MS caused by inflammation of the optic nerve is most notable for causing vision loss, though it also usually causes pain, and particularly with moving the eyes as in looking around. Although the pain usually resolves much more quickly than the vision loss, 
which can recover slowly over months or even be permanent in some cases, usually pain of optic neuritis is not treated specifically as steroids used to treat the condition ameliorates the pain as well. Number nine, dyspareunia. This is the medical term for persistent pain with intercourse, and although it can occur in men, it's much more common in women. Not a lot of patients complain to me about this. Perhaps they're more comfortable speaking with a gynecologist, although studies in MS suggest it's not rare and it's associated with the condition. There are various treatments depending on the specific cause. Number 10, secondary problems. Not every symptom is actually due to MS. I have patients with pain that's clearly due to knee arthritis or a lumbar herniated disc. However, these can be indirectly related to MS. People with gait disability and spasticity walk abnormally, have disrupted posture, and this can put a lot of stress on the musculoskeletal system over time, and orthopedic problems are common in people with MS and may be indirectly related. Sometimes these problems can occur simultaneously with neurological symptoms causing confusion and delayed diagnosis of MS. Number 11, migraine. Although common in the general population, numerous observational studies suggest migraine is slightly more common in people with MS for unknown reasons. It's not necessarily directly caused by MS. Perhaps people with MS have more stress and sleep deprivation, which indirectly worsen migraines, or maybe they're just more likely to see a neurologist to give a formal diagnosis of migraine, whereas other people with rare migraines may go undiagnosed. Regardless, the same lifestyle modifications and medical treatments of migraines that work for the general population are also effective in people with MS who suffer from migraines. Please share in the comments below if you have any of these conditions and what treatment worked for you. I'll also include links to other videos that go into more detail on trigeminal neuralgia, muscle spasms, layer meets phenomenon, optic neuritis, and migraine treatment. And let me know if you have ideas for other videos.